a couple minutes in here, so let's go ahead and get started here. So um, again, welcome everyone to our live session demo here. We are going to be doing an amazing summer grilled fruit salad dessert here. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our star chef of the day here. We have Chef Amos. She is a graduate of the French Culinary Institute in New York City. Uh, chef Amos is also a career changer. So um, a lot of people who may not have started out in the culinary, you know, not in the culinary industry, they they find a way here. And Chef Amos is another one of those as well. So uh, a little bit about her. She holds a degree in business and previously worked in the field of human resources and marketing. So uh, over the course of her culinary career, she's worked in the south of France, New York City, and Atlanta with and for some of the best chefs in the industry. She's also worked behind the scenes at some major cooking festivals for a wide variety of well-known chefs in the culinary field. And uh, for more than 10 years, Chef Amos has focused teaching in the academic and private sector. So she's taught classes here and um, for Whole Foods, Art Institute, the Cordon Bleu, just name a few. So without further ado, Chef Amos, let's see what you got for us today. All right, hey everybody, glad to have you here. I hope that you enjoy my demo. I'm gonna go over a lot of information. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an insight as to what to expect as soon as you enter the uh, baking program. It's very exciting. There is a lot of stuff to learn. We do go at a pretty fast pace, but it's all manageable. You know, so I'm going to kind of give you some insight in terms of what would you expect your first class. I'm going to go over a couple of things that occur in your very first class here and how to set yourself up for success. In baking or in the culinary field period, time is of the essence. Everything is uh, based on time. You know that when you go out to eat, whether it's fast food, you expect your food to be delivered in a certain period of time. So we try to train you from day one to prepare yourself to you know, understand the time constraints and setting yourself up for success. In my classes, I talk a lot about not just technique, but the science behind cooking, just so it, it makes it a little bit easier to understand and why I'm telling you do this, do that, and this is what's gonna happen so that you're able to take control when you're in the kitchen. So what I'm gonna be demonstrating today, I'm gonna do a couple of things. Uh, one of the very first things you do in the pastry program is you learn knife skills. And the reason that uh, we focus on knife skills is because at some point in time, whether you're on the sweet or savory side of the kitchen, you have to understand knife anatomy, how to use it so that you can be in control of your ingredients. Uh, we want to be in control, not just of how it cooks, but how it looks. And so ooh, I rhymed, I wasn't planning that, but we want to be in control. So the knife is the beginning. So that's the very first class is that we go through the fundamentals of knife skills. We also talk about uh, safety and sanitation. Because once you start uh, working and you're doing in volume, there's all kinds of things that can go on uh, be between getting burned or cut while you're in the kitchen. Um, sanitation, because when you're serving a larger audience, you know, whether it's private catering or whatever, people have a lot of different things. They have different allergies. So we teach you how to work uh, sanitary as well so that you can prepare. Because the health inspector is always watching what we do. There's always a food outbreak. So we take you through that. And then we start getting into the techniques. So I'm actually covering two classes in one today. I'm gonna to be safety, sanitation, knife skills, first class, and then um, pound cake, uh, because I think that's like the third thing that you make in class or whatever else. And I just combine them because it's summertime and summer, we have a lot of fresh fruit that's out, good fruit. And one of the things that you will find as you uh, people know what you do for a living, they're always like, man, I'm tired of eating the same old thing. What can I do to jazz up my meal? So one of the things that I like to do in the summertime is I like to use the grill because it keeps the house cool on the inside, but grilling adds another flavor to your food. When we get that nice little char in there, you know, people who love hot dogs or, or steaks, they love that little browning. It's the same thing you can do with fruit. People don't think about that. So I'm going to grill my fruit and a little bit of pound cake. And all that's going to do is, is elevate the flavor of whatever you're eating. So now we can start thinking about really enjoying our food with a little bit of a spin on it. All right. So if you guys have questions while I'm doing, doing the demo, feel free to ask. I'll be able to answer them while I'm working. But I'm going to change my camera angle now. And we're going to focus on my cutting board. Okay, so I've got myself set up. So I've got a lot of stuff uh, set up here. I have my uh, pineapple. This is one of the items that we, you know, talk about cutting in the class. I've got my knife already set up, my cutting board is positioned, and I've got gloves. Okay, 
So um, the reason that I wear gloves, um, there's a couple of things. One, in the professional kitchen, uh, you, you have to work clean. And they really don't want to see um, fingernails, extensions, or nail polish because all of that stuff can chip off into your food while you're actually eating. But the other thing is anything that's called RTE, ready to eat, goes straight in the mouth. We have to make sure that there is minimal hand to food contact, um, you know, between washing your hands and everything else like that. So in baking, we talk a lot about wearing gloves because we work with a lot of finished products and we wanna make sure that we keep it as safe and sanitary as possible. So I've got a pineapple here and I'm just gonna show you, I like to, to twist the tops off because technically, get a little, little arm strength here, there we go. Technically you can pluck the bottoms off, dry them out and then rehydrate them and grow baby pineapples. So uh, I, I'm, I don't have a green thumb, I know it works, but I just like to twist the tops off, but anyway. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into cutting the pineapple. So in baking, presentation is everything. We want things to look really nice. So we teach you some basic cuts, things like slicing and dicing, all for presentation purposes. So we also talk about setting your workstation up, your cutting board, keeping it stabilized, the importance of working with a very sharp knife. We talk to you about how to hold the knife, get an, a good grip so you're in control. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, show you if, you if this was the fruit that you chose to cut, how do you get to where you just have the meat, okay? And, and eventually we also talk about what's called usable portion um, or edible portion. So I wanna cut off the parts that I can't eat and just trim that off so we can get down to the parts that are the good stuff. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a couple of different cuts so you can just kind of see where we're coming from. And when you do your classes, what normally what we have you do is with the assignments, we have you document very specific steps so that we can see that you understand the process. So that way you, you know, there are certain points where if you don't do things right, you might end up with a mistake. So we'll ask you to document your photos in a very specific order. All right, so I do have a few little eyes here. So we'll just trim those off. And I'm going to do a couple of different cuts. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to actually grill them. And the reason I'm grilling is that anytime heat comes in contact with certain types of um, carbohydrates or proteins or fats, it adds another layer of complexity. It adds something to it, that charred flavor that just takes it to another level versus eating it um, you know, completely raw, which there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not going to lose any of the nutritional value or anything else like that. So I'm gonna cut straight down through the pineapple. So if I were taking pictures for class, I'd probably say, okay, chef, here's my scraps. So you can see that. And here's a picture of my pineapple. Pick, you know, click, click, there's my picture. Now I say, okay, I wanna cut some plain. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay my pineapple on its cut side. We're gonna get rid of that little eye there. And I'm gonna cut straight down. And I've got that core there. I know people who love to eat those cores. So I just cut this at a slight angle and get rid of my center core. And we're gonna cut what we call planks. So I'm just gonna cut some slices. And the thing I want you to, to watch, which is in our videos, is the motion. I'm just rocking up and down. And the reason I'm rocking up and down is so I can control the knife, which is sharp. And I don't wanna damage the blade. Cause when you do that, you damage your knife blade and the knives are pretty expensive. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut a few planks. And I'll set those off to the side from the planks, though I can also dice. So I would take my pineapple and I'm trying to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. So with the planks, I have these nice little spears. I'm just going to cut what we call sticks and try to make sure they're as even as possible. The other thing we keep talking to you guys about is the claw motion. We're just going to Cut up and down, and we'll do some dice. And there is my dice, my planks. I can make my planks a little bit smaller. Okay, so you see some different knife cuts. Some other cuts that I can do, I keep seeing these little, and by the way, this um, pineapple is really sweet. So um, what I also try to talk about a lot of times is how do you pick your fruit? But it's important to buy fruit when it's in season. 
because that means you have to do less work to make it taste good. You want it to taste good on its own. All right, so we'll just cut a couple of large chunks here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna place them onto some skewers and we're gonna grill them. All right, so I got some I could put in a, a carrot cake. I got some I can just chew on and some I'm gonna grill. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat my grill up. And you can do this outside as well. So if you have a grill, charcoal, propane or whatever, it's all the same. Again, the purpose of me using the grill is because I just wanna introduce some complexity to my dessert and make it something not quite so boring that would be expected. I've already got some uh, prepared fruit here. So I did a couple of peaches, some nectarines, I did cherries. Uh, you can grill watermelon. Um, there's all kinds of fruit. Any kind of melon will go on there, pears, apples. So sky's the limit. What I like about grilling fruit, there's a few things. Um, I always am trying to figure out ways to get rid of my fruit if it's, you know, because I buy a lot during the season. I can take the same grilled fruit. I can make jam out of it and preserve it. Now I've got a smoky or a barbecued jam. Um, I can puree it and make sorbet, or I can incorporate it into ice cream. There's many, many different things that you can actually take and use your fruit for. So we get asked a lot of questions. It's like, chef, what am I supposed to do? I, I cut all this fruit up. What can I use it for? Well, I just gave you about three or four different suggestions of things that you can actually use it for, or toss it together, make a fruit salad. You're doing a barbecue, add it into a drink. You've got so many things that you can actually do with your fruit once you get, you know, once you get it cut up that you don't have to waste it. And fruit is a good source of uh, natural sugars. So I talk about that in nutrition as well. So kind of covering a lot of things. All right, so while my grill is heating up, this is the other thing. So when I'm doing this, in order for me to get that nice texture on the outside, what I wanna do is get my grill nice and hot. You never want to cook food on a cold surface. The only exception to that would be something like bacon. And we use a lot of bacon and baking as well. But you want to get it nice and hot because my objective is as soon as it hits that grill, I want to hear that grill start talking to me. I want it to start to sing, whether it's an indoor grill or an outdoor grill. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusty skewers. So I'm using metal skewers, but if you had um, wood skewers, bamboo, they would soak in cold water for a minimum of 30 minutes. And the reason we would soak the skewers is because they are wood. And if they go into the fruit and they get hot, when you try to remove them, they, they leave splinters behind and nobody wants to eat wood unless you're a woodpecker. So I chose to use my metal skewers. But now what I'm gonna do is take some of my fruit and we're gonna go ahead and put it on the skewers. And I'm doing skewers because it's gonna make it easier for me to uh, thread, uh, remove it from the grill when I'm ready. So we've got some nice colors going on here. I, I pitted my cherries earlier and just trying to make it look nice and presentable. I left the skin on my nectarines and my peaches, um, one for fiber reasons, and two, it, it, uh, it's a little bit more complex to actually remove the skin off of a peach or a, a nectarine. So you can see I've got some variety, some variety of colors here. So want to just go ahead and do a couple more, waiting for my grill to get just a little bit hotter. It was smoking on me earlier. And again, if you guys have any questions, please make sure you pop them in the chat. All right, so we'll skewer a couple more of these up. And then I'm going to show you how to make the honey yogurt dressing. And by the way, this, this really does smell good. I'm, I'm so sorry that I don't have smell of vision but you can just imagine good fruit season. I'm in the South. We're fortunate to have um, a good weather pretty much year round. All right, one more, three is a good number. And then we'll jump into making our sauce. By that time, my grill should be nice and hot. So in baking, one thing that I always stress to people when they're baking, is baking is a uh, hands-on thing. It requires all your senses. The one sense that I, I joke about, but I, I believe people should use a lot is common sense. If it looks done, it probably is done. So when you bake, you have to make sure you stay engaged in the whole process from start to finish. Because with baking, if you make a mistake, majority of the time you can't fix it. Cooking is different. Sometimes, you know, hey, you don't put enough salt in, you add in more. Oh, you need more chickpeas. 
you know, soak some more, add some more in there. But with baking, once you start, you got to go all the way through the process. All right, so my grill is getting hot. I'll set my skewers off to the side. So the dressing that I'm doing, since I am doing a fruit salad, is a honey yogurt dressing. So I like to get a nice full fat yogurt because it's gonna add a little bit of fat and tang because my fruit is very lean. So when we eat, very few people wanna eat things that have certain textures or don't have something interesting. It's like when you go to get a burger or something like that, there is a reason you have a bun, you have lettuce, you have condiments on it because of, it, uh, of itself, the bun and the, and the burger meat don't have a lot of uh, contrast. So you add in things to make the whole experience that much more interesting. So it's the same thing with this fruit salad. I've got fruit that's sweet and it's very lean. To cut back on some of the sweetness and the leanness of it, I'm gonna add a little bit of fat in the form of yogurt. I'm gonna add some uh, vanilla extract in here as well. And by the way, by the by, vanilla is actually an aroma because vanilla comes from a tropical orchid plant. And we know we smell flowers, we don't necessarily eat, eat them, even though there are some edible ones. So I like to tell people that what vanilla does is it makes everything uh, more vibrant. You add vanilla to chocolate, the chocolate tastes more chocolatey. You add vanilla to lemon, it makes the lemon taste more lemony. So I'm adding in a little bit of vanilla extract because it's gonna make the flavor of the yogurt itself actually pop. Okay, so we'll set that off to the side as well. So my pound cake, okay, so again, this is like the third class. Uh, this utilizes the, what's called the creaming method. And the creaming method is where we take fats and sugars, we blend them together uh, to make a pound cake. The original recipe was a pound of butter, a pound of flour, a pound of sugar, um, and I'm missing one ingredient. Um, and that's where the, the whole terminology pound cake came up. But now we've modified it a little bit. I added a little bit of vanilla in there, I mean, excuse me, lemon when I baked mine. It's got a nice color, it's very consistent in my loaf pan and uh, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna use my uh, pound cake as well on the grill. All right, so my, I can feel the heat from my grill. We'll cut up a few slices. And we're gonna also talk a little bit about plate presentation. That's something that you will get into, I believe the third, the third class somewhere around there about the art of plating because we want things to look visually attractive. All right, so my grill is nice and hot. I'm gonna add a little bit of fat to it, not much. I'm just gonna brush it on there because it is a massive grill. I just wanna make sure that everything doesn't stick. And I also wanna utilize the grill marks that are on there. So we're just gonna take our little pound cake and you're gonna get a nice little brown texture. FYI, okay, um, another recipe you guys do in class, uh, some of your first classes are pancakes. When you are getting things nice and brown like French toast, what you never want to do when you're uh, browning things is turn it or peek at it prematurely. So one of the things we teach you about is something called the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is where the proteins come to the surface and they brown, uh, they cause the browning. It's called caramelization. And that though only occurs when the product first touches the grill. So don't get overexcited and say, oh, I want to peek at it and see how it's going. You got to give it some time. So what I normally do to kind of assess whether or not something is ready to be brown, I'll move it, I'll smell it and see whether or not it's ready to go. So got to have patience. That's the other thing that um, baking requires is a lot of patience. It's a wait and see thing, especially when you get into making bread. It's, you have to wait until that bread is done. Does anybody have any questions uh, at this point in time or we're kind of waiting on my pound cake to grill up just a little bit? Actually, I'm gonna move it down here. Looks like we already got a star pupil here. Uh, eggs was the last ingredient that we were missing in there. So she's calmed down here. That was from uh, Angel Thank here. You. Thank you, I appreciate it. I know it was something that's like, my mind's moving too fast. All right, so I'm gonna take the other half of my grill. And I don't know if you can hear it, but there was a nice little sizzle. So we'll drop our skewers on there. And we just want to get a little bit of browning. On an outdoor grill, this is going to go by extremely fast. And again, why am I doing this? Because I want to, I, I want to make it a little bit exciting. Pound cake and fruit, you're like, eh, you know, that's okay. But, but when you add that extra dimension, 
And it's something that's unexpected. People are always like, oh my gosh, I didn't expect that. I, something else I like to do with pound cake is I like to make pound cake croutons and serve them with ice cream. And they're like, pound cake croutons? I'm like, yes, a crouton is, you know, a traditional crouton is nothing but stale bread that we toss in fat and seasoning and brown in the oven. Who says you can't do the same thing with pound cake? A lot of the ingredients are the same. So I, I like to keep, you know, my old pound cake and make croutons out of it. It's something that people don't expect. And part of being in the kitchen professionally is you have to figure out ways to reinvent things that people are expecting. So coming up with different ways to talk about it. So we'll see how brown this gets because this is an indoor grill. So this is starting to get a little bit brown. So we're getting close there. So while I'm doing that, let me set myself up. And we'll talk about plating. So with plating, you guys know when you go out to eat, you know, if somebody just took this and like threw this stuff on the plate and you're like, this is really good. You might be going, mm, I don't know about that. The art of making things look visually appealing is a big sell when it comes to baking. You, you guys were talking earlier in the chat about Duff and you were talking about uh, Buddy Velastro, the cake boss. You know, they specialize in the art of making things uh, look visually appealing. And no, it's not hard to make pound cake. The biggest thing is making pound cake, which you'll find temperature of your ingredients. Uh, most things in the bake shop you'll hear us talk about room temperature ingredients because there is a science behind blending ingredients together. And then patience, uh, you know, you have to wait for it to bake. But while you're waiting for it to bake, don't go lay down and take a nap and say, you know, I'm gonna set my timer. You kind of have to be engaged in the whole process. But that's a good question. But no, we, we teach pound cakes because it's, uses a method that's the most universally used, which is called the creaming method. Okay, so my pound cake I'm turning over. You can't really see from your angle, but it's got some nice, it's starting to get some grill marks and it's got a little bit of charring on it. So we're gonna flip that over. It looks like the left side of my grill is a little hotter than the right. And my skewers are sizzling and talking over here. So we'll Flip those around, they're starting to get some color on some of the pieces. The chef looks like we have a question here um, asking, can you use uh, angel, uh, angel food cake, Sandra, is what you're asking? Yes, angel food cake, pretty much anything will work, if, um, you know, as long as it's not ice. So we teach you to make something called genoise um, that can be used. If it's an ice cake, no. Could you do chocolate pound cake? Of course you can. Could you grill a, a cake donut? I've done that before as well. So yeah, you could do something like that with a, uh, um, an angel food cake, which I personally think is delicious because angel food cake is nothing but egg white, sugar, and flour. So it doesn't have a lot going on anyway. So I personally think that when you grill it, I think it takes angel food cake to another level. So I, I'm all with that. But like I said, donuts, we grill donuts, um, brioche, if anybody's ever had brioche. We, anything that does not have a lot of um, extra fat added into it or is glazed, we're all about grilling. I mean, it, it really takes it to another level. All right, so we're close to getting there with everything. So pound cake is uh, grilling up here. Any other questions? Yep, I love brioche bread. And you do learn how to make brioche in class. So. Uh, not your first class, that comes a little further down the road, but you do learn how to make brioche. All right, so let's uh, get one of these slices off, and hopefully I can kind of tilt and, you know, my, my uh, tongs are in the way, but there are some grill marks sitting on the top. So again, all I was trying to do is get a little bit of color in there and flavor. Now, this is the thing that I, I do want to want you guys to remember. When it comes to plating, there are a few things that we um, set up as what is good plating. Height, depth, and flow. A lot of times you'll hear pastry chefs talking about everything on the plate should be in three. I put three different, I put three of the same pieces of fruit on a skewer, so I have, I have six. And then when I plate, I'm gonna plate with three. That's just kind of the unwritten rule that you'll hear a lot of pastry chefs talk about is the three. So I am gonna put three slices of pound cake on this plate. And then I want to have some height. So what you see here, see if I can change my angle, is I put the pound cake on a slight tilt. So one lifts the other up. 
And then I'm gonna repeat that again. So height, I've got a little bit of height. I've got some depth and then we have flow. And I created flow by setting everything off as kind of an offset angle because we wanna make it visually appealing. So when you guys get into plating, you'll hear us talking about the visuals of it. And nothing makes a student more prouder than when they do a really good job at their work. They take so much time into the presentation of it. And that always makes our heart sing. Even when we don't ask for it, they do that. So that's just something for you to think about. All right, so now we've got our pound cake sitting up here. This is a little bit larger than a single serving portion. Uh, I could reduce it to make it that way, but for the, the sake of this demo, I just want you to see the visuals. All right, so my pineapple is just about done. My uh, nectarines and peaches have some good color. The cherries are good. And my yogurt sauce is ready to go. So there's a couple of things uh, when it comes to plating and using sauces. Sometimes you'll see sauces added to the top. So you could put a little bit on top there, or you might see sauce actually put on the plate. And I'll do a little bit of that so you can see that visual. And I usually tell people, if you wanna get some ideas for plating, YouTube, there's always somebody out there on YouTube who's doing something fabulous or Instagram or whatever else like that. Now, this is the thing. There, there are a lot of schools of thought about tossing plates and stuff like that. Some people say that you should have enough sauce on a plate for each bite of the food. Other people just want to be able to provide a color contrast. So it's, it's something that you will develop your own technique uh, over time. Another area of, of pastry that I actually am really known for is chocolates. Um, you know, the art of making chocolate. So a lot of times I will put chocolate on the plate, excluding the summer because it's going to melt specifically in Georgia. All right, so here we go. Uh, chef, we have, sorry, we have a question here. Um, someone's asking here if we could uh, repeat the ingredients for the yogurt sauce, please. Yes, it's simple. Greek yogurt. Oh, look at that. So you guys can see that. That looks great. I think I'm going to replace that. Uh, Greek yogurt, and I used uh, local honey. Uh, and I added in a little bit of vanilla extract. And if you really want to thin it out, um, a little bit of uh, neutral flavored olive oil also goes very well in there. And the reason I use olive oil is to help these fats. All right. So you guys can see this pound cake. I'm going to use these slices instead. Have some really, really nice color going on. And again, the reasoning behind that is it's really going to add some good flavor on there. So this, these nice little char marks on here is really going to create a good plate, uh, flavor profile for my plate. And if I were doing this outdoors, I would have got that char on there. So it kind of looks like toast. I realize that. But again, if you were to serve this and you would say, oh, just try it to your guests, they would be like, oh my gosh. Because like I said, that just that browning adds something that you can't even imagine. And all of this, excluding the yogurt sauce, is what you learn in your first six weeks of your pastry class. So it's doable. All right, so my fruit is already done. I'm not gonna eat it in front of you because I don't wanna make anybody jealous, but the flavor of the fruit, the sweetness gets mellowed out by the grilling. Just like with the pound cake, the charring on the top of the pound cake is what kind of balances the flavor. So we'll just take that off the skewer. And just try to be a little bit precise and exact with my plating. And then we'll add a little bit of yogurt sauce right on top. Just a little bit because, again, what I'm trying to do is make sure that I create a little, little bit of balance on the dish flavor-wise. I've got smoky, lean. I've got sweet. And now I'm adding a little bit of fatty on here in small amounts. I did a little bit on the plate, but I just want a little bit on here just to kind of provide a little contrast. Another thing that I do sometimes is I'll just put a little bit of this in a dish off to the side. So that way, whoever's eating it can turn around and say, okay, I'm going to have um, uh, just a little bit, uh, you know, with each bite and it allows them to serve themselves. Now, I will tell you the, the most overused garnish on pastry plates are whipped cream and mint. Mint does not go with everything. 
and whipped cream is just pure fat. Whereas this has a little bit of acidity to balance everything out. That's why I chose to use yogurt sauce. I don't know how well you guys can see that. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in a little bit. I could put a little bit of mint on the plate, but you see that the pound cake has nice color. My fruit has a little bit of a charred smoky flavor to it. And I created a dish that also looks visually appealing. And there's so many ways that I could have done this. The, the sky's the limit. I could have cut a hole on the inside, put a little bit of yogurt ice cream on there, and then put my fruit on the side. So many different options that you can do with just this, these two classes in the pastry program. This is two classes of information that I gave you in one demo. All right, so any other questions? I think, I think I'm good, Chef, or I'm good with everything. All right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, well, thank Chef. you very much. Thank you, Chef Amos, for your amazing demo here. And um, it looks that, that you're making me jealous all the way up here. I'm about to take, hop, skip, and jump down to Georgia there. <laughs> <laughs>